particles like these so fast with me. Bombs out of mechanics and pipe up some cold words, but no one can deny the fact that quantum theory works. This dot point is pretty much very similar to the last one, so we'll get straight into it just to cover it as quick as possible. It says compare qualitatively the relative number of free electrons that can drift from atom to atom in conductors, semiconductors, it's meant to say semiconductors, not semiconductors, and insulators. Right, so first again, what are conductors, semiconductors, insulators? So conductors are the ones which can conduct electricity quite well. That means they have most of their actual electrons in the conduction shell. shell. So they're going to be con electron conductors, uh, conduction electrons. You can have your semiconductors. These ones are kind of halfway in between your conductors and insulators. So they're pretty good at conducting electricity, but not as good as your, your conductors. And the insulators, these are going to be really bad at conducting electricity. That means they have high resistance. And high resistance means bad at conducting electricity. Right, these were the different words. And we also said that, for example, the band structure for a conductor will look something like this. What that means is that all of your valence electrons, your valence electrons, which used to be in the valence shell, are basically now in the conduction shell. And that we can say that the conduction shell and the conduction um, valence electrons and the conduction electrons are one and the same because all valence electrons are actually conduction electrons because they're all moving freely. In a conductor, they're all moving freely. They're not bound to their actual original atom. So this one here might uh, not be there anymore. They might have moved, and they, they will keep moving. They're all free to move as, as they wish. We call them delocalized electrons, and we call the sort of the model of metal lattices, we call it the sea of electrons, because these guys are not bound. They can move as they wish from one place next, because all of these are conduction electrons. And semiconductors, we have some of them will have enough energy, so we see the band is a bit different. We have the valence band being partially filled, so it means it's almost full but not quite, so it's partially filled. And the reason why it's not full is because some of these actual electrons, the ones which are the higher range of the energy, they would have had enough energy to jump that gap and become, become conduction band electrons. And that means some of these electrons won't be there, they won't be in their original position, they will be the ones which are floating around and conducting electricity quite well. But overall, it's only very few that manage to do that. Most of them are stuck in their actual original structure. Right? And then we said also insulators. The insulator had a high energy gap, which means that most, you can basically find all of your electrons in your valence structure, valence band. And very few have managed to jump into the conduction band because the energy gap is so high. So it says compare qualitative Qualitatively, the relative number of free electrons that can drift from atom to atom in conductors, semiconductors, and insulators. Well, for the conductors, it's more or less all, right? So, generally, it's all of the electrons which can drift around because they're all conduction band electrons. For insulators, it's at room temperature, it's usually none. So, most, basically, all of them are stuck. They're just, they can't move. They're stuck and they're bound to their actual atom. And semiconductors, We've got a few, so, and this is still a tiny number, but we have a few electrons who have managed to get enough energy to jump from the lens band into the conduction band, but most of them are still stuck. And then we also said that we can change some, we can modify, for example, temperature, right? Because by adding temperature, we increase the thermal energy. Thermal energy means that we give these electrons more energy, in this case, heat energy, thermal energy, right? So by giving an, the electrons more energy, what that means is that for the semiconductors, if we increase temperature, that means we're going to have more free electrons. More free electrons for semiconductors when we increase energy, uh, temperature. The reason why is because these electrons will have, on average, more energy. And that means, on average, we're going to have some more of these lens band electrons will be able to jump and become conduction band electrons. Right? So if we increase the energy for your actual semiconductors, we will also increase the amount of conduction electrons. Whereas that was a bit different for your conductors. Because remember, if we actually increase temperature for your conductors, what will happen is the opposite. Right? So 
if we increase temperature for your conductors, we will decrease, so we increase resistance, which means we make them move less well. They're still moving, but they're often colliding because if we increase temperature, what that means is they're moving faster. If they're moving faster, they have more of a chance of hitting the actual center of a nucleus, which means they get they lose their energy and they're stuck. Right? It's, it's resistance to flow. So in the case of conductors, if we increase temperature, we increase resistance, whereas in the case of semiconductors, if we increase temperature, we decrease resistance. One example, one of the reasons why we um, increase resistance when we increase temperature was because more collisions happen, and also, in this case, semiconductors, when we increase temperature, we have more of a lens band electrons jumping into the actual conduction band. But as you can see for your conductors, all of the actual electrons are already in the lens band. Uh, sorry, the lens band and the conduction band are basically one and the same. They're all identical, which means if we increase temperature, there's not going to be more of them jumping into the conduction band because all electrons are already in conduction band. Right? So that means it's, there's no point in increasing temperature to increase the flow of electrons or make more of them move freely because they're already all moving freely in a conductor as it is. Right? And in a semiconductor, there's none, basically none moving at freely at room temperature. But if we do increase temperature, there's a possibility of making a few more of them electrons be have enough energy to become free electrons. So we can make more free electrons by increasing temperature. But the problem is usually if we have to increase it by so much that by that, at that time, the actual structure of, for example, a plastic or the rubber will break down and we might be conducting elect electricity, but we won't have any plastic left to actually have its normal structure. So this dot point was more or less just the same dot point as last one, but um, different wording. So it says compare qualitatively. So qualitatively means not with numbers, just qualitatively. The relative number of free electrons that can drift from atom to atom in conductors, semiconductors, not conductors, but semiconductors, and insulators. And we said that in conductors, basically all of them can move freely. Semiconductors, only a few can move freely. But if you increase temperature, then more can move freely. And insulators, basically none at room temperature move freely. But again, if we increase temperature, theoretically, we can make more of them also move freely. And that's what this top one was all about. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.